I'm going to share with you uh, a common practice on Kawasaki transmissions. And I bet your uh, race bike probably has this, or your race quad, I should say. And I also want to give you some history. So a lot of the lessons I give in class are my failures or where I got into trouble as a mechanic or whatnot. And this is a funny one because this takes me uh, back to my history with, uh, with the other instructor here, with Dirk Bach, uh, when I went and started working for him when I was 21 or so right out of college. We had a customer, and this is so important where we talk about work orders, but we had a customer bring a KZ1000 motorcycle, a legendary bike, right? And this is back in the uh, mid-90s, into the Honda Suzuki dealership that I worked at. It was Honda, Suzuki, Kubota, uh, BMW at that time. And uh, being a young, fresh uh, college graduate or whatnot, uh, I was really excited because the owner that had just bought the bike literally from a garage sale or something said that the transmission was bad. And uh, I was like, oh, give me the job, give me the job, I'd love to have that. And uh, so we walk over the motorcycle and we grab the shift lever on this Kawasaki and we shift it down to first gear and the transmission would turn the back tire. We'd shift it into neutral and it would go fine, but it wouldn't go into second. And so sure enough, would that seem like a logical diagnos uh, diagnosis to you guys that there's transmission problems? Yeah. Not at all. There was absolutely nothing wrong with this motorcycle. What it, the problem was, is we didn't know Kawasaki's. So we were a Suzuki, like I said, Suzuki Honda shop, and I, tore, I pulled the motor, split the cases, did all the precision measurement like we just did in the last video, couldn't find anything wrong. I think my gut started getting a little knot. Thought there's gotta be something I'm missing. Brought my coworker over, uh, my boss there, and, and Dirk, and said, hey, you know, take a look at this. He couldn't find anything right. He says, well, maybe you've destroyed the evidence in the disassembly. That happens sometimes where whatever was broke or whatever is wrong, maybe there was dirt or something, you know, that was jamming up and just not allowing it to shift. We just didn't know. And so uh, put the bike back together, stuck it in the chassis, went to fire it up, you know, carbs on, everything else. Did not one time try to shift it. Just di didn't even try. Go to take, uh, go to uh, fire the bike up on the bench or whatnot, and I go to shift it. Uh, in first gear, it goes fine. I grab the lever by hand, go neutral, it goes fine. Won't go into second gear. I'm like, oh my God, I must have done something wrong. Pull the motor, split the cases again, couldn't find anything wrong. And at this point, where there's you know, a, you know, 10, 15 hours of wasted time at this point, I thought I'd do a call out. And I called a buddy of mine that I went to college with. And uh, Hoagie, where are you at? I'm right here. I called Mike Gregory. And, uh, and uh, what was the other kid's name that's up there, Jackson Cycle? Uh, well, it's Climber. Uh, Jason Climber, I think it is. Climber is what we know him as. But uh, I call and say, hey guys, this is crazy. I'm working on this uh, old cowie down here, and we, can't, we cannot figure this transmission out. So it's a lot like you guys getting to be friends and, and uh, calling somebody working at a dealership. And he goes, let me guess, it won't shift past uh, neutral. I said, yeah, that's exactly it. And he says, because they don't. I'm like, what do you mean they don't? He goes, that's the design. Just go ride the bike. So that Kawasaki that, you know, I'd taken in and out all those times, at this point, I put it back together, uh, went and rode the motorcycle. So it only allows you to shift past second with centrifugal force because they have three tiny little balls. Do you see, well, I'm going to start to show you the components here, but basically there's little ball bearings in here. And do you see how that limits the sliding action of this gear? Yeah. Okay, but why don't we focus on the microfish to show you where these parts are at. Right here, number 37, you've got your shaft, and you can see here the little uh, groove that you see on the actual part right in front of you guys. These little balls are inside the gear, and they ride in this track. And so what happens is, as the motorcycle spins enough RPM, the balls fling up into the gear, they come out of the track, and then it allows movement. Okay, I don't know why, I don't know what the point of the design is, but it's a Kawasaki thing. I still see these on newer bikes, older bikes, you name it. I'm gonna disassemble this. I just wanted to show some of these components. Can you see the ball there? Yeah. We've just packed it full of grease because that's how you assemble it. You just put some grease on there, uh, and that allows you to slide the gear onto the shaft, but, um, so may have their little pick set. I'm gonna go ahead here, and I'll show you 
So that ball is pushed up in that hole right there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, push it down. Do you see how it locked it? Oh, yeah. So it limits the travel. You can spin this usually. See how I flicked it up with the grease and now I got it off? So that is, uh, I'm curious to see how it would say in the manual of how to actually get these out. What I've done is just packed a bunch of grease in there from the top side, or slid it over as far as I could and put a bunch of grease in there. And then when I flick that up, now it allows me to go ahead and remove the gear. Can you imagine what that was like for me though? You know, 22 years old or something, uh, feeling pretty proud and I took a motor apart three different times and couldn't fix it. Now, what the interesting part was is could we charge the owner of the motorcycle for any of the transmission service? No. Zero. The, the owner of the vehicle is who brought it to us and told us there was transmission problems because he didn't know how a Kawasaki operate either. The, the guy ended up uh, tipping us, if you will, because when he bought that bike, he bought it dirt cheap from a garage seller or whatnot because it had a bad transmission. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Interesting story. Now he needed the carbs cleaned and he needed the bike gone through and brought back, but he did not need 20, 30 hours worth of labor to do that. So um, it was a big loss, big learning lesson for me. So as you guys, that's another reason here we do all these different motors is we want you to be exposed to, you know, things that seem outside the box. Does this, this just sound kind of crazy, you guys sitting here thinking that uh, how many people knew that there was a motorcycle out there that wouldn't shift past neutral, non-running? You knew about the Cowies? Okay. Not Did you have one or? We had one come into the shop and I had tried to uh, just shift it through the gears. I can't figure it out either. And my owner, my boss comes over and tells me the same thing. Yeah, it's a Kawasaki. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm pretty sure 20, you know, 20 years ago, not near the amount of people knew that. You get what I'm saying? The big fail was two things. I took something apart before reading a manual or before researching it. And here's what's going to happen. You guys are going to go to work and, and you're going to, with today's economy or whatnot, Kawasaki shops, do they work on Suzuki's and Honda's and everything else? Yeah. It's been happening for years, but it's a, a lot more than it used to be. Unless that shop is super, super, super busy with their own product, they're going to take stuff from another dealer or from another uh, brand and you're not going to have the service manual. So you want to use your resources. And I really recommend that as entry level technicians too. If you get handed that job or you know something's coming and it's on a product that the dealer doesn't normally service, request the literature, request the service information. You guys all know how to find those here. I teach you about trade bit and those different places where we can download those manuals pretty cheap. This is just stuff where you have to have product information or you're going to waste a bunch of time. All right, well, that is my, uh, uh, just my quick demo here on Kawasaki transmissions, and you guys all know about uh, the balls and the details.